feel shame. Um, now, um, if, if you're not opposed, I would, would suggest going in order, in order to avoid confusing the harmonious seating arrangement here. Um, so, uh, Yamsalaf, if you have a response to the idea of, well, the ideas that Gashbar is just put forward. Okay, thank you for inviting me at first. I'm glad to be here with Gaspar, Tamash, and other guests. Uh, at first, let me say a few words about the concept of post fascism and, let's say, accuracy of post fascism. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, I was at the airport in Barcelona waiting for an airplane and I bought a new left review with an uh, interview with Gaspar uh, called Words from Budapest. And uh, I read it and um, I thought to myself, wow, <laughs> uh, who's that man who, who, who said it precisely? What's happening now? It was the time of, uh, especially in the Czech Republic, of protests, uh, of, of uh, racist demonstrations against uh, Roma people, and uh, it was it was time before the so-called refugee crisis and uh, and so on. And uh, I think uh, when I look at the reality today, the concept of post-fascism, in my opinion, it has never been so accurate as today. So uh, I have to say um, that uh, uh, texts of Gaspar Tamash uh, uh, seem to me as kind of a prophecy, dark prophecy, unfortunately, not very, not very optimistic prophecy. And uh, it also reminded me some some concepts like uh, concepts of sociologist uh, Seymour Hart and Lipset, uh, the concept of extremism of the center. Uh, which is the concept of the impoverished middle class defending itself against, let's say, big business on the one hand and uh, against minorities, uh, the left and the workers' movement on the other hand. However, uh, as Gaspar uh, said, we don't have any workers' movement today, so we have big differences and uh, we don't have any strong, authentic uh, left. So, uh, in my opinion, or in my view, this uh, so-called post-fascism is a kind of, or as I see it, is a kind of reaction on, on uh, two, two phenomenons. At first, is a reaction on capitalist or neoliberal devastation of society. And uh, the second is reaction as on the so-called historical revisionism. Uh, neoliberal, neoliberalism uh, brought, especially from the 1970s and um, in the Middle Eastern, uh, in, in the uh, Central Eastern Europe, uh, brought uh, destruction of uh, solidarity, of social solidarity. It uh, brought neoliberal individualism. It uh, brought a lot of uh, negative negative uh, negative phenomena and uh, it brought also kind of an ideology of, of individualism it uh, destroyed uh, society it destroyed the structure of society and uh, it brought with itself a kind of a mythology uh, so-called mythology of American dream especially in, the, in our post-communist world believing that one day that if we uh, will work hard we will become rich and uh, so on and especially after the crisis in 2008 and uh, after uh, another crisis uh, this uh, belief was shattered and I think this, this belief of a kind of a uh, belief in a golden, golden globalized world with freedoms and uh, with, with prosperity, uh, this belief was destroyed. So nowadays we are uh, in times where people, uh, in a way, I think, don't know uh, what to do, what will be, and they are looking for <coughs> some kind of, uh, let's say, solidarity again, but uh, today 
the, uh, the instrument of solidarity or, or the, the period of solidarity has changed. Nowadays, it's uh, very common and uh, very simple to find solidarity in racial or ethnicist ways. Uh, it's very, very simple and uh, very, uh, very common to find ethnic and racial solidarity, at least something which is common uh, for the people. Today also, uh, uh, I, my personal nickname for the concept of post-fascism is kind of a fascism of our living rules. Because uh, I think uh, it's not necessary uh, to, for, for today's uh, extreme right and fascist and uh, racist <laughs> populist and so on, it's not necessary, necessary always go to the street uh, for important part of, of this this uh, modern of this, of this fascism is is uh, internet is uh, for some of them is enough to be uh, on on uh, on the internet on Facebook on, on Twitter and spread uh, hatred spread uh, false news spread conspiracy theories and so on so this is also important part and, and for the people who feel isolated who feel abandoned. It's kind of a uh, kind of a uh, uh, these people who feel isolated uh, can find uh, kind of a solidarity in, in this in this new media uh, like Facebook and Twitter and uh, social networks. The second aspect I mentioned uh, is uh, historical uh, revisionism because. In my opinion, especially in our post-communist space, we have uh, a common, or we, uh, we have had notion that um, all revolution, um, all revolutions, um, let's say Bolshevik revolution, Cuban revolution, even French revolution, they brought only misery, death. They didn't brought anything, uh, anything valuable. And so it's a kind of distraction of this emancipatory notion which all these revolution, despite that, despite, uh, of course, they brought negative things, but uh, this kind of a notion that they also brought kind of emancipatory things as well uh, has, been, has been destroyed in a way. For example, um, I studied here in, in Prague at the Philosophical Faculty, History, and uh, what we were taught was exactly this. We were taught, uh, taught historical revisionism, mainly right-wing revisionism, that all revolutions were bad, mainly, that, uh, for example, colonialism was good, it brought uh, civilization to colonized people, uh, that, uh, for example, right-wing dictatorships uh, in Latin America weren't uh, so bad, and. So on, it's kind of a reactionary, reactionary thinking, and this historical revisionism, uh, right-wing historical revisionism, is trying to destroy, to to destroy the emancipatory legacy of of, uh, of our of our history and of our memory, trying to destroy it completely. So in such a situation where we where the solidarity, uh, solidarity. Uh, uh, the solidarity is uh, articulated in racial or ethnic, or ethnic, ethnic terms and uh, with historical region, revisionism. It's uh, very easy for today's uh, ultra or far right and uh, fascist to go forward and uh, to communicate with people and because they operate in a kind of a uh, symbolic milieu, symbolic uh, field or in public discourse. Which, which is used to uh, these phenomena like uh, individualism and historical revisionism. And so it's, uh, for them it's very, very easy to, uh, to operate. And it's easy for them to, uh, as well, to, to argue against things like universal human rights, universal citizenship, and so on. They can, they can articulate uh, inequality uh, very easily in such a way. So for us, I think it's the task to challenge this, to to argue against this, and and uh, maybe yes, maybe uh, 
uh, rethink our attitude towards power, towards towards challenging today's power. Yes, and I think we will discuss it later. Thank you. Thank you, Esbella, to be here and uh, to have the opportunity to dispute 